Good morning, Sean. Thanks for your purchase of this new Breville Oracle Touch in Black Truffle. Um, in this video, I'll be demonstrating the machine, making a latte, testing all the features, and just teaching you a few things that I do know about this machine and uh, how to get the best coffee out of it. So, um, when you first turn on the machine, it usually takes about five minutes to reach temperature. You can uh, see the menu here. I've brought the brightness down so you can see it on video, uh, but you can you have the default coffees and you can also create your own. Uh, let's go into the cappuccino. I'll, I wanna make a cappuccino actually to test the froth at its full frothing capabilities. Um, so yeah, usually it takes about five minutes to, turn, to reach the 93 degree set temperature. You'll see the temperature rise up as it heats up. And once you have the green buttons, that means it's ready to go. It is a dual boiler, so you always have both of them available hot water and steam, or like coffee and steam. Um, but there is a uh, option, there's an option in the menus to tell this machine to wake up in the morning so that it's ready when you are. Um, I've told this machine to wake up at 4.30 a.m. Uh, so now it's 5 a.m. and it's nice and hot and ready to go. Um, I'll be using the double basket that comes with your machine. So as you probably would have noticed, um, this machine doesn't have the stock drip tray. Your one is still in the box. I'll be uh, using my own drip tray, my own water tank, my own bean hopper, my own port filter, and my own milk jug to keep your uh, components nice and clean. Don't want any moisture in, in, your, in, in your box. And I'm gonna try my best to dry everything and vacuum everything so that the machine arrives to you nice and clean. Um, so that's, that's why this is nice, nice and shiny compared to yours, which is uh, black. Um, this is from my used machine. Um, yeah, so using the double basket, I'll be, uh, grinding at, uh, grinding at number 10. Um, I'm not too sure if it's the right grind size yet, still yet to, to, to make coffee on it. Uh, but I'm using, I got these last night. Uh, it's the Aldi Dark Beans, um, uh, roasted look at the side it has a batch date if you reverse that it tells you that this was roasted on the 20th of April which is just about 10 days ago 11 days ago uh, so this is pretty good um, fill the bean hopper with these always make sure to close your um, bean bag Nice and tight so that they don't age. So yeah, I'll be using grind size number 10. Um, and the double basket usually takes about 22 grams, give or take. Uh, I'm using my scale here to measure the inputs and the outputs. Just for your curiosity, I want to know um, how much goes into the basket. But just as importantly, I want to know how much that comes out of the handle. Sorry, it's a bit too noisy. Yep, so um, that's done. Nice and clean temp. There's usually there's a bit of, you know, ground coffee either here on the sides or a bit um, on, on the inside. You can just flip that upside down and most of it will go away. And looks like we got 22.2 grams, perfect. Uh, so that's about standard what I see on these oracles. They usually uh, tamp it pretty, ta pretty tightly and pack a lot of coffee in there. Um, uh, just as important as the input, we want to measure the output, so I'm also going to use the scale for the espresso. Uh, weight, or like amount, we want a 2 to 1 ratio, so for every gram we put in, we want 2 grams out. We put in 22, we want 44, so if I get anything between 40 and 50, I'll be happy. If it's outside that range, um, it could be over that 50 gram mark, or it could be less than that 40 gram mark. If it's over, so the, the machine will brew for, for 30 seconds if we choose the double, 30 seconds, that's fixed. If in the 30 seconds we get, say, 60 or 70 grams of coffee or more, uh, that tells us that the grind size is too large and we need to grind finer to slow it down and reduce that quantity in the 30 seconds brew time. If we get a very little amount of coffee, so say instead of 45 we get, 
I don't know, 20, 30. Uh, that's under the 40 grams that we we're aiming for. Um, so in that case, we need to grind a bit larger to, um, to give it more flow speed. Think of the grind size as a flow speed. So a smaller number means a s slower flow and a smaller quantity in the end. Um, I'm also gonna use, I'll show you the hot, the hot water tap. Uh, you can do like long black, long black coffees without having to move your cup, which is pretty nice. Um, and on the milk side, you can select the temperature and the froth level. We'll put the temperature at 60, which is what I like it at. And the froth, let's put it on the maximum to see what it's capable of. And I'm just gonna add some uh, syrup to my sugar. So before your espresso, it's recommended to, if you like sugar or sweetener or any flavoring, to add them beforehand so that they mix nicely as the espresso is brewed. Okay, I'm gonna zero my scale and then press the brew. Of course, again, it's a dual boiler. We can do both at the same time. But just for the sake of the video, I'll only be concentrating on one thing at a time. So brewing a double shot. Grind size number 10. Okay, it looks like <laughs> we are checking our machine. So it looks like grind size 10 is a bit too fine for the machine. And we just now, at the 15 second mark, just now got some drop dripping. Um, so that's good, that means the beans are actually good because um, the ground size isn't that fine. Um, it's fine, but it's not the finest I've seen. So that tells me that the beans are actually fresh. That's good, uh, I, can, I guess we can jump. Usually I would tell people to jump one or two numbers at a time. In my case, um, I'm gonna jump all the way to say 15. There we go. I'm gonna jump all the way to 15 because yeah, it's, we don't have the time to do one number at a time. Plus, I think it's way too fine to the point that jumping one or two won't make a difference. One or two numbers won't make a huge difference. So we want to sort of leapfrog. Um, and two things about the grind size. Firstly, I would highly recommend you only change the grind size with the grinder grinding. Um, you don't want to do any damage to the burrs, um, especially if you're going finer in grind sizes. In, if, the, if the burrs aren't moving and it's not grinding, uh, they just smash each other and there's beans in between them and uh, that puts a lot of stress on the mechanism. So start grinding, wait for it to grind, uh, and then go. And after you've arrived at that grind size, that preferred grind size, which is in my case 15, after you've arrived at that, um, keep it running for another two seconds to get rid of the old grind size. So there's a couple grams in the shoot of the older grind size, so we want to get rid of that. That's why we keep it running. Let's try 15 again. Uh, let's try 15 now, and um, hopefully this will be a bit quicker. If not, we'll go to 20 uh, if we have the time. Looks a little bit coarser, nothing drastic. Um, about 21 and a half. So a little bit less, because we are grinding larger, it's usually packed less tightly. Uh, let's give it another go. Hopefully this time's better. If not, we'll go all the way to 20, which is fine. This is part of the trial and error process that almost every coffee machine goes through. Uh, sometimes I get it on the first go, sometimes not. It's just bit of luck. Um, here's my cup. I'm gonna zero my scale again. And brew. That's a little bit better. So this is going to size 15. Looks like it's flowing at the right speed. Looks like it's going 
got enough crema. Tell me that it's a fresh bean. And it stopped at 30 seconds. Perfect. There we go. Um, let's have a look. This is 40.1. 40.1 grams. Pretty good. I was aiming for 45 and we got, you know, between the 40 to 50. Sorry about the mess. It's a, it's a bit of a mess around the kitchen here. But uh, yeah, here is the coffee. Looks good. If my phone can focus on it. There we go. Yeah, so you don't have to use a scale, especially as, a, it's, as it's an automated machine. Um, you can just eyeball most of it, but at least now I can give you the machine with settings that are in the ballpark at least for what espresso should be. Just focus a little bit, there we go. Um, yeah, that's decent, I would say. Uh, if your bean is fresher than this, you may have to go finer, sorry, larger, uh, because fresh beans have more pressure in them. If you get the bean and it's been more than a month since roasting, it, you may need to go a little bit finer. But look, uh, as long as it's roughly 40 to 50 grams, if you can judge it by eye, then I think uh, probably won't notice a difference between you know 40 and 45. Um, unless you're highly experienced, uh, and you won't notice it, especially if you add you know milk and water and flavors to your coffee. And next I'll be doing the flush. I do this with every machine, I highly recommend it. So instead of going all the way to the sink and rinsing the pork, I'll just do a few seconds of brewing. That's gonna clean your porta filter and your shelf screen in one go. And if you wanna be extra nice to your machine, grab a tissue or a brush that's, that's included to your machine and wipe the shelf screen. So there's almost always a bit of coffee grounds, even after you've flushed this a few granules, a bit of oil from the coffee, or just espresso, uh, really. Um, you can set a scavenge with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a brush or a tissue. Um, and after, after this video, I'll dry the machine thoroughly. Don't stress about that. Next, we will do the milk. So um, I like to purge just a, a second or so to get rid of any um, condensed steam inside then the milk jug goes like that so yeah this is the maximum front level at 60 degrees celsius and this is uh cow's milk full cream uh it wasn't in the fridge usually i would recommend people to use cold milk so that you can uh, froth it for longer But it shouldn't be too bad. In the meantime, I'm going to use this time to get a wet towel so we can wipe the water straight away. All done. So have a wet towel handy. Um, obviously the wand is metal and it gets really hot so it will burn the milk, oh sorry, it will stick to the milk and from a thick coating if you don't wipe it off straight away, especially with a, with a wet towel, uh, a dry towel won't cut it. Um, make sure you wipe the, the underside here, which is a place that a lot of people miss. Uh, and then when you push it, it'll clean itself. And you will it'll say auto clean in, in progress. All done. And it wouldn't hurt to wipe it one more time. It's for good measure. And make sure you wipe the tray. Some of the milk will fall onto it. Perfect. This is a nice amount of foam. So grab your jug, knock it on the counter if you have any big air bubbles. This will break them up and then swirl it around to mix as much as possible and then this, the surface should be nice and smooth like wet paint almost if you've seen that before um, oh uh, you can also use the, the machine in manual mode i forgot to say so you can froth your milk just like a barista manually and hold the jug position it etc uh, but the autom automatic setting did a pretty good job
So it's a cappuccino texture. It's not going to be thin enough to do any latte art. Again, it's a lot of foam. It's about two centimeters thick, I can see. Uh, maybe more. Um, quickly show you. Not that it's a beauty to behold, but it looks delicious at least. Um, and yeah, I'm sure you can make even better coffees like that than that. Um, and yeah, machine works great. No problems at all. Uh, looks great. Works great. Hope you enjoy. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate. And uh, I'm sure you'll get your machine later this week, just in time for the weekend. And yeah, any questions, please don't hesitate. And uh, thanks again.